I spent most of my childhood in countries that were part of the socialist bloc. So these were atheist societies, and Christmas was downplayed. And the Christmas tree was the New Year's tree. The Christmas gifts were the New Year's gifts. Santa Claus was not Santa Claus, but it was Father Frost. And I really feel that today in America, we are shifting towards this post faith post Christmas Christmas, and we're missing out on the grand story. So this is what I want to talk to you about in this episode of Headspace. Here we go. So this episode is going to be sort of a stream of consciousness episode. So bear with me. But I think it may offer some insights and some value uh, for you during the Christmas season. So I remember first experiencing Christmas in America when I'm after I married Deb and we started coming over to the States with our daughters to celebrate with the grandparents. And I remember having this culture shock because everything was over the top. I mean, the decorations, the Christmas music. I think the family dragged me out to do like Christmas carols at strangers' houses. And it was like super awkward for me. And uh, and the presents and everything. And eventually I sort of assimilated. We moved stateside. Now nothing phases me. I'm fully American, right? And But I also noticed that the shift towards from Christmas, the story, to the holidays as, as a sort of a post-Christian generic thing where it's the tree, the presents, the kids, the family. And I and we're I feel like we're missing out if we if we throw this away, right? Because that's how I grew up. I grew up in a in a place where, yes, it was family. Yes, we, we would have this big table and there were presents and it was fun, but there was no story and the story is transformative. So how is it transformative? And how is it that we can change ourselves and sort of lean into the story without it becoming sort of mundane or maybe mythical, ethereal things. Okay, yes, of course, the three magi, of course, all of that stuff, right? So I think it's really valuable. There's a treasure there to be mined for. And the first thing is this, that there is a God, the creator of all things, and his mysterious and perhaps feels separate, but in this story, he comes and makes a home with us, and he sends his son, the Messiah, to us into this very humble circumstance. And it shows this creator God who is benevolent and warm and relational. And honestly, for me, I used to be an atheist. Uh, it, this was a revelation, and, and I think we forget about these things, right? Is that God is good, and God is real, and he sent his son. And then... What does that mean next, right? It means that it defines who we are, that we are worthy, that we are worth for the Son of God to be incarnate, to live a life and model life for us, and we're even worth dying for. And that is incredible, and that we are giving this second chance and third chance and a hundred chances because of this one event, we can reinvent ourselves, we can regenerate ourselves, we can renew ourselves, we can be born again, and it's okay. And I think that's a powerful transformational story because we carry with us so much trauma and so much shame and so much conflict and so much fear of the future and even sort of this inadequacy of who we are. And the story elevates our identity. And then who are, who can we be for others? I think that's the next thing, right? That we, because of who we are, because of who God is, because of who we are, we can be different for each other. We can be generous and supportive and present and gracious, and we can forgive, and we can sort of breathe in this season and spend time together and that presence with a T are less important than presence with a with a C. And we just love this, right? And we are needed by each other. And we can give of ourselves to other people. And then the third thing I think it's remarkable in this is it's not only a projection of the past, this awaiting for the Messiah, this arrival of Jesus, but it's also this foretaste of the future of the return of the Messiah. And what that gives us is this sense of peace 
we know how the story ends. And just, that's remarkable. That in the struggle, in whatever storm we find ourselves in, and we always find ourselves in a storm of some sort, that we know how the story ends ahead of time. We know that we are victorious because of the story we attached ourselves to and the big grand meta story that we find ourselves being part of, right? So this season, this Christmas season, yes, it is sort of mundane. Yes, it happens every year. Yes, we, we, it's, it can feel somewhat ritualistic. But my encouragement to you is not don't let it be unimportant, right? Don't let it be this rush, this 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 rat you know rat race of a different kind for this particular season. Don't let it be just the materialistic stuff, right? Um, not just the tree, not just the presents, not just okay, we're gonna eat together, but allow yourself to slow down and breathe and see the grand story. The story is everything, right? You can see this arch, and you're part of the story even before you were born. And somehow, miraculously, you're grafted into the story today. And also, our community, how we are with each other, can change the way we move forward. And our future is bright and wonderful. And I think if we do that, if we reframe our story and allow ourselves to live through this season this particular way, it can change the way we enter into the new year. We can explode into the new year with a new understanding of the meta story, of a new understanding of ourselves, how we relate to each other. And we can create a different future for ourselves, our families, the people that we serve, or serve um, in our workplaces. So may this season be life-giving to you, my friends, right? May this season reframe your story and remind you that you're part of this grand, victorious, glorious story. And that because of who you are, and because we know how the story ends, you can live very differently today during this season. And as you enter in this new year, you can change the world your particular way, your particular glorious way. Thank you for watching this. Please send it to someone who needs to hear this for the Christmas season. Because sometimes, you know, we enter it and, and there's dread and there's mourning and there's shame and there's regret and there's fragmentation of some sort. Uh, but I think the story mends all of this, right? It heals it. It elevates our souls. And uh, it may elevate your soul today, but it may elevate somebody else's soul. So send this video to someone who may be encouraged by this. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for being part of Headspace. <laughs>